Well I'm finally starting to calm down about the horror of the torrent I had downloaded. I had realized that although I was getting bloody noses recently, the idea of it being in the same pattern as I said previously was just a mind of matter issue. I still feel it though, even when my nose isn't bleeding, all thanks to that freaking horrific picture of Frylock, oh god that face. I never want to mention that again. I mean at times they would use some hyper-realistic images in the show, like when Carl was crushed to death by Paul in the episode Couples Skate, you could briefly see that his eyes were hyper-realistic for a few frames before his head popped off his body, and the episode ended with rave music. But what I saw was just horrifying. I want to apologize for not explaining who I was in the previous story. Don't forget, I wrote about that freak in Nightmare as if it was a diary entry. My name is Nicoli, and my other friends will be named as I resume writing this. Every time I go to take a shower, I'm always concerned that I'll see that face in the mirror or when I close my eyes to go to sleep. The experience really changed my perspective about the show. Now I'm frightened to watch any of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force episodes. I even got all my Aqua Teen Hunger Force DVDs and my Frylock plush, yes, I do have a Frylock plush, and put it in a box and put it in the garage. I had dropped my computer off at a nearby Best Buy about a week ago to get that gory background removed. I mean looking back, it was like as if it was melded with my computer screen. I had talked to my girlfriend about this and even showed her the screen on the computer before I had brought it to Best Buy. My girlfriend also is a fan of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, so she was surprised to hear about Frylock viciously murdering Carl, carving his stomach up like a Thanksgiving turkey. I mean in the original episode Frylock did kill Carl, but he just put a blade through his stomach, i.e. Terminator 2, Judgment Day, and then threw him into a dumpster. I mean, that was like in less than 10 seconds, but what I saw on that torrent. Ugh. I swear it felt like an eternity. Just the sounds that Carl made before it was all over. I'm scarred for life after that. I needed to take a break from watching Aqua Teen Hunger Force altogether. When me and my girlfriend Jennifer were at my friend's house last Friday night, I insisted to watch anything but Aqua Teen Hunger Force, so we watched some Nostalgia Critic episodes to get my mind off of that horrendous video. After we watched an episode where he gave his top 11 favorite Simpsons episodes and ended up arguing with the elephant about the Let's Play of Bart's Nightmare he did last year, my friend Marvin started to ask me some questions about what had happened the night I downloaded Aqua Teen Hunger Force ISO. I got frightened by this and buried my face into a nearby couch pillow. My friends were starting to get concerned for me. After a few minutes I calmed down and explained to them both that I downloaded an odd type of torrent online under the name Aqua Teen Hunger Force ISO. I explained a little more into detail, like about the sudden dip noises the computer would make at certain times in the video, there would be random blackout moments, lines and animation from the original episode had been changed, the word cannibal being written in random places, and Frylock's hyper-realistic face. My girlfriend Jennifer was a bit skeptical about what I had told them and she said that we should look up the file to see if it was even there. I begged her not to find the file but she just keep looking online anyway. She clicked on the link to the website, but the link for the torrent wasn't there. She looked all over Pirate Bay but the file didn't come up. She went back to Google where she saw another link, which was a forum site that had the same title of the episode. She clicked on it and literally the first picture that we saw was Frylock's disfigured, demonic, nightmare-fueled face I had described earlier. It wasn't big enough to cover the screen like I had mentioned earlier, if anything, the size of the picture was only a bit bigger than a Facebook profile picture. My friends gave a little yelp in fright. I totally freaked out and I buried my head into the pillow again, giving a short but loud yelp myself in complete fright, horrified that I saw him again, that goddamn face. My friend lowered the page as fast as possible so we couldn't see that disturbing and cursed face again. At that point I could have sworn I was having another bloody nose as I previously mentioned because of that goddamn picture, but my friends confirmed that my face was clean, ever though it felt wet to me. After I calmed down, my girlfriend continued to look down the page for info. I was still buried deep in my pillow at the time as my friend suddenly found something informative about the video I had watched. It's said that over 63 people had also downloaded said torrent and had similar issues like I had, thinking that the bloody noses were in the pattern that Frylock's face had in the video or seeing sudden illusions, and many had to see therapists. Fortunately, no one had killed themselves from watching the video like in other cases, like in many of those lost Spongebob episodes for example. 
My friends checked the rest of the page to make sure there were no other photos from the video and as soon as they confirmed that I decided to finally get up and look along with them about the video. There was a link about a recent arrest of a man who had tampered with the Aqua Teen Hunger Force series, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force ISO was in the tag. We clicked it and found out that this guy had been helping out with producing the animation since the second season. This man under the name of Jim Reno, had produced some wonderful animation in recent classic and horror movies in the past and him being stuck doing nothing but Flash had rendered his artistic career to a minimum. Granted it was easier than doing traditional animation but he felt cheated out of his professionalism. However, he was going through some serious mental problems and struggles with his personal life, and considering that he's in his late 70s. That would make sense for some dementia. Then one day he lost it. During production of Super Birthday Snake, he had started to produce a different, more demented version of the episode in his spare time for his own gratification. He eventually decided to shelve the episode before anyone found out that he produced it. As I was reading this I started to realize that the different lines in the video sounded like as if the voices were slightly different, as if the actor was doing it all on the top of his head, like the manic depressive lady who voiced and produced Spongebob in the Sponge Cry episodes. As we read on, they explain the many glitches in the animation I had previously mentioned, like Miqua turning into a gravestone instead of an igloo. As for the face we all saw, he also made that on Photoshop. Rumor has it that he did not model the face from scratch being how it was too realistic. He had to draw it while looking at something. And that something we all knew, had to have been from someone's face who looked exactly the same. Possibly a corpse. He had to have carefully detailed every part of the face all by himself. As we continued reading, we found out that the guy had made his own version of the second DVD volume of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. He used numerous programs to make it and fixed it so all the bit noises and brief moments of blank screens were inserted into the torrent. He even produced the artwork for the main menu. As for everything else on the torrent, there were no other episodes or anything except the one I had seen. We had stopped reading when something had suddenly occurred to me. I had only watched about 5 minutes of the episode, but I didn't know if there was anything left in the torrent, so I painstakingly asked my girlfriend to see if there was any more info about how long the episode was or something like that, we ended up finding the entire video online. It says, watch at your own risk, and, only 18 and up should be allowed to watch this. Well I'm 21, and I nearly crapped bricks as soon as I found out that the freaking video was online, but to be fair, I was watching it at 2 in the morning and had the sound blasting, so maybe watching it in the daytime would have a different effect on me, whether for better or worse. It was uploaded privately on YouTube and the only way to view it was from a different website, such as the website we're on at the moment. At that point my friends were about to watch the video but I insisted that they should watch it in a different room, and keep the volume extremely low so I wouldn't have to hear the horrific noises or see Frylock's freaking cursed face again. My girlfriend was used to scary imagery suddenly popping up on the screen, and my other friend had read enough creepypasta stories that watching this wouldn't be too frightening for him. They both went into the family room as I turned on the TV and watched some family die. After about 45 minutes, they finally returned with the laptop and they seemed a tad upset about the video. Jennifer seemed as if she was almost on the verge of crying, but it was reduced to minor sniffles, and my other friend seemed much calmer, yet he still looked shaken, like me after I watched the video the first time. But why did it take them so long to finish watching the video, considering that a usual episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force is usually 11 minutes, 12 minutes tops? They had told me that the video was not 11 minutes. But it was 30. Not like commercials in the middle of it and stuff like when they had the deleted scenes in the episode, no. I mean a full freaking 30 minutes of that demented horror of an episode. They actually had to go back to certain parts of the video to see a few scenes over again to see the brief one over 8 of a second frames I had previously mentioned before. At that point I was just wondering out of sarcasm, and almost yelling to my friends. Why they didn't just add more freaking references towards Satanism, like just have Frylock randomly out of nowhere, come up to the screen and say, Satan is only here for you, there is no god. Or something like and just make more freaking screeching sounds and crap. After my sudden outburst, I calmed down and they explained the rest of the video. They noticed while watching the intro, all the stuff I had mentioned wrong about the beginning was true. They got to the end of the intro where they saw a brief image of Static before it continued onto the episode. 
As I said before, it was about an eighth of a second that you could see it. They had apparently went back to that part of the video and they saw what the image was. It was an image of Master Shake on the floor with minor wounds on his body, and he was also eyeless, like as if someone had gouged them out. What was more bizarre was that he was smiling delightfully, and even gave a peace sign, like as if he was pleased with the loss of his eyeballs. They also saw Meatwad, who seems to be literally demolished into nothing but a tiny scrap of himself and had enough space for his face. Some of his remaining pieces are scattered around him. Again, just like Master Shake, he seemed delighted that he was nearly murdered. What's even stranger is that Frylock was in the picture, but not in the same demonic way he was in the video, but it had seemed to be that he was murdered with gunshot wounds in his body, blood coming out of his mouth, and even an eyeball dangling out of his left eye socket, but Frylock was the only one who wasn't smiling. At that point my friends realized that Master Shake and Meatwad had murdered Frylock in self-defense and they were smiling as they succeeded. My friends got past the first few minutes of the video I had described previously. After they got to the part about Frylock graphically murdering Carl, the screen once again went blank with another bit noise for about a good 45 seconds before the screen came back, and they saw a close-up of the house where you see Frylock looking actually kinda normal, excluding the blood that was still on his body, as he drags a large bag of what we can assume the bodies of the people he had recently murdered. A large amount of blood comes out of the bag as Frylock is dragging the bag on the sidewalk and into the garbage can. The garbage man that arrives doesn't even seem to question all the blood on the ground and just throws away the garbage for Frylock. As soon as the garbage truck drives off, the background becomes a bit distorted and Frylock goes back to the house and has another demonic face, but this time it's much less grotesque. He floats into a meatwad's room where he looks at the gory stains left on the walls and ground with delight. Then I was told that Frylock's voice sounded demented, less than in the first five minutes of the episode, but still frightening. As his face stared at the blood-covered walls, you hear Lee almost muted. I'm glad that those two freaking dog craps are finally dead. I couldn't stand that cup's half-assed remarks and that meets moronic actions. And that goddamn fat tub of frit next door is gone too. He chuckles a bit as he turns around, you can see his face. His face was nearly similar to the one he made when he first killed his roommates. Instead of him yelling loudly like last time, he gives out an ear-pitching screech, but even though my friends had turned up the volume to hear what he was just saying, it wasn't ear-shattering for them as it was for me. The screen then blacked out for about another three seconds with a bit sound in the middle. When that happened, the same image from where I barely saw previously reappeared for about a good one half a second. My girlfriend was still shaken by what she saw, but still managed to stay calm, unlike what I did previously. Then again, she has a freaking fetish for horror videos like this, so I didn't worry so much about her. She started to explain what happened after that scene where it suddenly cuts into the middle of the garbage dump, where you can see the bag from earlier that contains Frylock's roommates and Carl. Why no one noticed the blood coming out of the bag is anyone's guess, but then all of a sudden a bloody zombified arm randomly pops out of the bag, almost like in the original episode, except it was in a construction site. At this point of the video it went back to the house, and what's even weirder is that it was going back to the original episode, which kinda relieved me a bit, especially thinking of the scene where Frylock mimics Meatwad's voice saying, I'm gonna have a pet. And for the next minute or so it stuck with the original episode. They told that they were relieved themselves that it seemed that the horror had finally ended for them. Boy, were they wrong. Like in the original episode, Frylock hears something outside and turns around to see what was behind him and gasps in shock, but his eyes widen and then go completely black. The screen went to black again for 7 seconds, then another bit noise came randomly and you can see a shot of the living room, all disoriented and bloody with guts, hanging bodies all around, and the word cannibal written on the floor with blood. It seems that the blood, guts and hanging bodies was reused from the epic scene from the episode The Shaving, which had ironically aired later that year, and we find out later that Jim had also helped produce that episode too, so I guess if anything, this scene isn't that shocking. My friend described as the bodies were slowly swinging around the camera started to zoom in very slowly, and for the next 5 seconds brief images would flash onto the screen, such as Frylock's face, Carl's mangled up body, the image of Frylock murdered, and the word cannibal would pop up in between each image shown. I still remembered the word cannibal written on the box where the snake came in, and on the wall on the back of their house, I was starting to wonder if this all connected or not. 
By then it went to black and the next scene showed outside Frylock's room where you can see Carl's corpse on the floor, but yet it looked like as if all of his previous wounds were healed up. It then blacks out for a fraction of a second as it now shows all the aqua teens, with Frylock being dead in the background like from the picture my girlfriend earlier described to me. Now it's less blurry and you can see the video clearly again, as Shake is giving his peace sign as he was weak at that moment and was showing that he was happy for murdering Frylock. The camera starts to zoom into Meatwad as he starts to speak, but it didn't sound like Meatwad's voice, it sounded like it came from the guy who produced this abomination of an episode. Meatwad then explains to us what just happened in the 7 seconds of blankness. We did it. We released that cannibalistic demon out of Frylock. We came back to stop him from killing anyone else in the city. Unfortunately Carl didn't survive, Shake is at the moment eyeless, and I've been ripped to shreds. He then puts himself back together. Oh, never mind. Anyway now we can live peacefully, now that we know that the cannibal is finally gone, and Frylock can rest in peace. The camera stops for a few seconds as it starts to slowly zoom into Meatwad's face, and he starts repeatedly saying, Cannibal. It then fades into what looked like the original ending, but with Meatwad still repeatedly saying cannibal. At that moment, Meatwad takes off his virtual reality mask, yes, he seemed to be practicing with virtual reality, and notices that no one is around. He looks around in complete fright as the camera zooms out to show that someone is watching him on the living room TV. It then shows Master Shake on the living room chair in question saying, Well, we're the pisses! The credits then come out of nowhere and go by fast, still crediting everyone who usually works on the episodes, except one new credit was inserted at the end saying, reanimated by Jim Reno, and that's where the episode ends. At this point I was very confused about the ending, all of us was. The ending almost sounded rushed and it seemed cheap to reference the word cannibal over and over again just for it to be about a demon seemed a bit lazy at best. I still felt that there was more to be found out about this, so I asked Jennifer if she knew anything else about Jim Reno and she informed me that we could visit him at the county jail in San Francisco. We lived about an hour or so away from there, so the next day we packed up and traveled down to San Francisco, 